You've likely heard of the Blanc Pan 50 Fathoms, perhaps even the Seiko 55 Fathoms. But what about the Spinnaker 300 Fathoms? Sounds bigger on paper, doesn't it? And for once, it translates into reality. Introducing the monstrous Spinnaker Picard, the maddest dive watch you'll see this year, excluding Invicta, of course. Based out of Hong Kong, Spinnaker is under the Dartmouth brand's umbrella, alongside others like Aviate and Fjord. I've reviewed two before now, both of which received middling reviews at best. The Flus chronograph was well built but ugly, and while the Hydrofoil Panda was a step forward, I wasn't a huge fan of those uneven subdials. Credit to them though, they keep at it, and they've now tasked me with reviewing this Picard. This beast is, well, beastly. With a whopping 45mm case size, paired with a 51.8mm lug to lug, and are you ready for this? A 21.1mm thickness when including the domed crystal. Fish eyed is probably the more appropriate term, as this protrudes to a truly ridiculous level. No, that thumbnail wasn't heavily photoshopped. This is a real watch and a real crystal. What's the purpose of this absurdity though? Well, predominantly, it takes cues from the original Rolex Deep Sea Special. The watch that, in 1960, accompanied engineer Jacques Picard and his squad to the bottom of the Challenger Deep, the deepest known point of the seabed. This watch had an even more projected crystal designed to withstand extreme ocean floor pressures. I wouldn't be able to cover weird watches like this if it wasn't for our supporters on Patreon. At Ben's Watch Club, we pride ourselves on providing 100% honest reviews with no filter. Unfortunately, we still make a net loss on production when covering lesser known brands like this, as these videos generally receive far fewer views than those about industry giants, which reduces affiliate revenue and makes the content less viable for prospective sponsors. If you'd like to see a wider variety of content on this channel and get early access to our latest uploads and products, then please consider sponsoring our work for $1 on Patreon. So far, these funds have been spent on fancy lighting and lenses, which is why the videos have started looking better. I'm also hoping to turn this into an off-platform safety net in case a brand gets butt hurt and tries to take our channel down. We saw just one more watch get deleted last year and frankly, it scared the shit out of me. This is my family's livelihood after all and I, let me tell you, we're not rich. If you enjoy the show, Patreon's linked down below. Now back to the video. It's by no means a Rolex clone though, also taking hints from the porthole-like observation window on the craft itself, as well as retaining some of the hallmark Spinnaker design cues from previous models. Rather impressively, this bubble has been created from scratch-resistant sapphire, debunking an excuse often used by some brands in a similar price bracket to this £400 Picard, where they claim that mineral or acrylic is required to keep those high domes within budget. Despite the scratch performance, this style of crystal does have some quirks or downsides depending on your taste. First up, there's the obvious. I imagine many people would view this as unsightly, as it is abnormal as far as wristwatches go. When combined with the already thick case, it also makes the watch about as traversable as the ancient walls of Constantinople. So your shirts and jumpers will likely bunch up unless you're wearing something really baggy. Lastly, the curvature also creates massive warping, rendering the dial unreadable past 45 degrees in any direction and increasing the field of view for potential reflections. Despite the anti-reflective coating, this one was a nightmare to fill, hence the lower quality B-roll footage in this video. That being said, it not only aids deep sea functionality, just in case you plan on doing some extreme scuba diving, but it gives the watch a truly unique look that may pose as a good conversation starter without going to the hideous extremes of other wacky brands. It's about time we started that counter. Of course, this one doesn't fit me properly, so it's difficult to judge whether a similar feature on a smaller watch would take my fancy. Before link removal, the Picard comes in at over 250 grams, so you won't be forgetting its on wrist anytime soon. I also reckon it could be pretty deadly as an improvised knuckle duster. What I will say is that it's built like a juggernaut, with no obvious weak points across the case or bracelet, a fantastic ratcheting bezel action, and a beefy, heavily grooved crown that's smooth to operate and highly responsive. The bracelet is also very well made, with thick solid links and a near flawless case integration. Even with that robust bracelet, the Picard is predictably top heavy, so it could prove unwieldy regardless of wrist size. Despite there being little in the way of complexity, with a singular brushing style across the entirety of the Picard, it still feels well finished and purpose built, as if it truly was born in the deep. The case rear attests to this, opting for hefty screw down construction over fancy viewing windows though it does house an etching of a submersible in the center. As you might expect, given the helium release valve on the side of the watch, it boasts a very high water resistance of 300 fathoms, or 550 meters to you and I. 
Essentially, it'll be impervious to H2O unless you have a pretty big accident when swimming with the fishies. Discounting the peculiar crystal, I have to say, I quite like the look of the Picard, particularly this colorway with the complementary gray and yellow green that provide great contrast without straying into boredom. Text is kept to a minimum, there's some tactically positioned on the unobtrusive rehort, and the majority presented in a clean, modern font that avoids any faux vintage cliches that could easily have been fallbacks here, given the theme of the watch. As a result of the strong warping, it's tricky to work out whether those markers are applied or not. They seem to give out some shadow, so I'm inclined to believe that they are, but don't quote me on that. Basically, the design feels like it's a mashup of a couple of different Spinnaker watches. In other words, it's not nearly as garish as most Invictors, despite being huge. Yeah, the other two colours, they also look pretty cool. Powering this watch is... Just run the Pokemon meme. Who's that? Watch movement. Let's be real, you've probably already guessed what's on the menu here. It's Seiko NH35A. Okay, it's decent enough, though you can get it in much lower cost watches than this. It's also not aided by the rather stubby second hand, which makes the beat rate appear much slower. If you've got a large wrist and fancy stepping out of your comfort zone, then the Picard does make for a good alternative to your run of the mill Seikos and Orients. Though it also comes with a substantial price tag that may be hard to swallow for something so left field. It's definitely my favourite Spinnaker so far, but I think if you're looking at these larger divers, it might be worth considering the Vostok 50 Fathoms. That one's cheaper and similarly tough. My pre-invasion review is on screen now, so watch it at your own risk.